Hi everyone, this video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 2.3.11, determining the DR and BDR, which is a designated router and backup designated router. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Enterprise Networking, Security, and Automation CCNA Version 7 curriculum in the Cisco Networking Academy. So for this lab, we've got three routers there, RA, RB, and RC attached to S1. All of them are utilizing OSPF to know where each other are, um, as well as we've got a loopback interface. Don't let the loopback throw you off. They um, just kind of simulated a separate network here. So that would be like if there was even another network connected off of RB. Sometimes we do that with other routers or sometimes we do that with uh, a PC or a local area network to show us really needing to divide the network up. So with this one, um, they just kind of use the loopback interface. Um, don't call it lazy or anything, but that's just a way to uh, look like another um, LAN or another network, okay? So in this design here, they're using OSPF. It's already configured for us. And basically remember with OSPF, not only do we use the shortest path first or SPF, we also look at um, how those neighbor adjacencies are formed. So it sends out those advertising packets and forms a neighbor once it knows about each other and it adds it to its routing table. Now, there is also a backup designated router as well as a designated router and then there's a, a, a other, basically you don't fit into either one of those categories. This kind of looked at as like the main router that keeps everything up to date. And then of course you got a backup because in case that one goes down, then the backup assumes responsibility for the network. So we're gonna figure out even how to figure out which one is the designated router, which one's the backup, and then look at how we even make that change by forcing it, okay, by turning off some uh, interfaces. So first, we need to look at the directions here. It says wait till all these link lights turn green so they're not the amber or orange color anymore, so they've negotiated everything. And we're gonna go to each one of them, go to the CLI tab, and we are going to type in the command. Let me zoom in here. And we're going to type in the command show IP OSPF. So enable show IP OSPF. And what we're looking for here, oh, sorry, that's just the basic stuff. We want to do neighbor. All right, so what we're looking for here is off of the G00 interface, all right, we know about 192.168.31.33, which is the name of the router. Okay, remember how we do when we're configuring our OSPF stuff from our previous lab. Uh, when we configure it, we configure it with a router ID. That's kind of looked at like its name. Okay, so it is the DR, our designated router. It's the boss in charge. Okay, the other one, whoever is dot 22, is the backup designated router. Okay, now if we go to each one, we should see, see some consistency here. So if we do enable show IP OSPF neighbor, then we should see some consistency. So on that one, you saw that dot 33 was the, the designated router. Here we also see dot 33 is the designated router. Whoever dot 11 is, is the other, okay? And I'll show you how to see also while we're here, if you do a show IP OSPF, you can see who is 192.168.31.11. Again, that's just the name that is not the IP address for connectivity or anything. And that is RA, okay? So RA is dot 11. So when we look at dot 11, it is the other. So it is not serving as the designated router or the backup, okay? When we looked here, we saw that dot 22 is the backup, all right? So who is dot 22? If we do a show IP OSPF, the backup is right here, RB, all right? So they are the backup, okay? So the designated by process of elimination should be RC here because they are the dot 33 name. However, let's type it in just to prove a point. So enable show IP OSPF neighbor. And right here we see that the backup is dot 22, which was RB. The other is dot 11, which was RA. So RC 
if we do a show IP OSPF is dot 33. All right. So uh, RC right now is the designated router. If you want to put that in your notes right quick, uh, RB is your backup designated router and RA is other. So it is not uh, the backup or the designated router. All right. So important things to know when you're looking at your topology. OK, so you can answer those questions there. OK, so it says turn on IP OSPF adjacency debugging with the debug command. So we do debug IP OSPF ADJ for on RA and RB. So let's go to that's RC. I don't need you. All right. So let's go back over here to RB and we want to do the debugging commands. We're going to turn those on so we can monitor what's going on here. All right. So. Also, remember our question mark. So if you want to turn on any type of debugging, which will alert you with a lot of messages every time changes happen. Remember, you can type debug question mark space question mark. And you're like, OK, uh, let me try IP. All right. Then we see OSPF there. And then we want to know about adjacency events, which are our neighbors. All right. So that's what we want to type there. And so we turn it on. So we want to type the same thing on RA debug IP OSPF ADJ. So debug IP OSPF ADJ and debugging is on. So any changes should alert us. All right. So we're going to go to disable G00 on RC. So if we look at it, RC here, the G00 is this port right here. So we're going to disable that. So it will no longer be able to communicate. You see, that's the only way in and out of RC to talk to it. So if we disable it, we're going to go to config T. All right, and interface G00, and we're going to type shut down or shut. And you see it says they're detached, so it no longer knows about our neighbors anymore. Okay, so let's go to RB and RA and see maybe what comes up or what might happen. Once it actually figures this thing out, we should get some messages starting to pop up. And it says it waits about 30 seconds for the dead timers to expire. That's uh, OSPF checking to make sure everybody's still uh, good to go. There's no new routes or anything. And we can fast. Well, there we go. No need to fast forward. So now you can see that process taking place. So it says the dead timer has expired to talk to uh, the dot 33 router. OK, oh. so it's saying, hey, we can't communicate interfaces down or detached, right? So now it says, all right, let's do this. It's doing that election process right now. It's saying, okay, who's going to now be the uh, designated router? So it's going from backup to designated. And now you see it lets uh, number 11, which is RA, know, hey, you're now going to be the backup designated router. So if we do an IP OSPF, show IP OSPF neighbor. All right. We only see one in the uh, dot 11 router, which is RA is now the backup designated router. OK. And then if you go to RA and do the same thing, you should see those election process taking place. And now 22, which is RB, is the designated router. OK. So now it wants you to actually turn uh, G00 back on on RC. So let's go to RC. We're already under G00. If not, remember interface G00 and do shut or sorry, no shut or no shutdown. So basically turn it back on. And we're going to wait and see what happens now. So we enabled it. So now we want to see did any changes happen. So is RC going to now become the designated router again like it was before now that RB is the designated router and RA is the backup? So what's going to happen? What kind of election process is going to take place here? So we're going to see, OK, it looks like the link lights are up. All right, it's sending, it's showing the election process. The LSAs are being sent out, the link state advertisements to basically let everybody know who they are. It's going through that election process. 
And then if we do a show IP OSPF neighbor, let's see if it's been long enough. It has. So it shows 33 back again, which is RC, right? But instead of it being the designated router now, it went kind of to the back of the line and now it is the other router. All right. So the designated other. So it is no longer the designated router. OK, so RB has stayed the designated router. And even when we go to RC and kind of exit, exit and do a show IP OSPF neighbor, you now see the designated router is dot 22, which is RB. The backup designated router is RA. All right. Where RA used to be the other. OK, so it doesn't really go back to the state it was if everything's flowing good. It just does the whole re-election process again. OK, so then it wants you to disable the G00 on RB and see what happens. So RB config T interface G00 shut down. All right. And then you wait a little bit and let that election process take place. You can always use this forward arrow here. It kind of jumps time. So that way that election process can go ahead and happen. And if you look on RA, we should have had, you see now the designated router is now RA. The backup designated router is now RC because RC is the dot 33. So again, if we do a show IP OSPF neighbor, we only have one neighbor now, and it's the backup designated router. If we go to RC and do that same thing again, all right, it is the designated router is RA, all right? So you can now see in my topology, RC is the backup designated router, RA is the designated, and RB is technically off the map right now, right? So then we want to restore connectivity on RB. So we go back to RB. And we're going to do no shut on this interface to turn it back on. And I am going to speed up the time here. All right. We'll get that election process in. And, oh. and when I show my uh, neighbors here now, you see that the designated router has now went back to the 22. The... 11 is now the designated router other once it did the election process all right and rb here there we go um you see now that the 11 is back to the dr other so now it's back like it was in the first time All right. So you can kind of see that election process take place um, as it goes through. And now we can turn off debugging, um, undebug all on uh, RA and RB. So that way, when we continue in this lab, it will not continue to show us every little thing. All right. Now. To change the DR and BDR, because you might be wondering what in the world happened, how did that, you, you might have thought that RA was going to stay, but it kind of kicked RA to the back of the line and made it the other again. So what happens is the priority. So that's the next section we're going to go through where we can actually force these elections to happen instead of letting them take place. But it has to do with the priority that it assigns. And it looks at that uh, router ID for assigning the priority for designated and backup designated router. So here we are going to do the IP OSPF priority command on each port that is receiving the interfaces to actually make that choice for us. OK, so the default priority is one. Remember in. Um, So the default priority is one. Uh, we're going to set that on uh, RC, um, RB, we're going to use 100 and RA, we're going to do 200. So we're going to go to the interface. This is on C. So we're going to do interface, ooh, config T, interface G00. 
and we're going to do IP OSPF priority and then we're going to set it as one then we're going to go to RB config T IP or interface G00 IP OSPF um, priority and 100 I believe it was yes 100 for RB and then we're going to go to RA and do config T interface G00 IP OSPF priority 200 all right all right so once we set all three of those priorities, it says force an election by resetting the OSF process, OSPF process on all routers. Starting with router A, issue the clear IP OSPF process on each router. All right. So let's go here. We're going to do exit. Oh, exit one more time. All right. Clear. And you see all our options here. Uh, IP OSPF process reset we want to do yes here all right and then it asks us to do the other one so let's go do the other ones clear IP OSPF process yes and same thing here exit exit clear IP OSPF process oh I type no yes all right so we'll wait a few seconds and we'll actually just go ahead and press the fast forward button let a couple minutes go by and now it says verify the BR and BDR elections were successful. This should take a few minutes. So let's see here who is who. All right. So we're going to do show IP OSPF neighbor. And now you see the priority here next to each one. 